Okay, so we are going to start by taking this visual idea of whatever is in this, when it gets put in here, this bigger cup now holds the same things that were in this plus more. Does that make sense? So keep that idea in mind because we're starting from the inside out. <clears throat> we're learning about the real number system, not in all seventh grade classes, but only in my two honors classes. The real number system is the very first lesson in chapter one of the algebra book. So we will be gluing these into our notebooks on Monday, and it will be a resource that we will refer back to next year, as well as use some of the vocabulary in it in our current unit in seventh grade math. So this is a crossover of seventh grade math and algebra. In some parts of our country, this is a seventh grade concept. In other parts, it's eighth, and in other parts, it's algebra. Um, and in our context, everything I'm teaching you today is for algebra, but some of it is seventh. So I figured it would be best to just do it all. Make sense? You guys ready to go with me a little bit into algebra thinking today? All right. So this is the smallest cup. It is the smallest set of numbers. The real number system, this whole thing contains all of the numbers that we know of that exist. And I'm gonna show you again, this is my whole visual that represents it. It's hard to see because it's dark. But this whole basket holds all of the numbers and your graphic organizer holds all of them, but there's two sets. There's a set that's over here and then there's a set over here that's by itself. So in this inner box, this is what we call the natural numbers. <clears throat> I'm not gonna get into the etymology, which is how words came to be. I'm not sure why they named these the natural numbers, but I think it's because naturally, this is the way kids learn how to count. Think about little kids and when they're starting to count. How do they do it? Go ahead, everybody. They count, their fingers. they count their fingers, and what number do they start with? One. The natural numbers also start with one. And they go on and on and on for infinity. So I know little kids can't count to infinity, but the idea is they start with one and they start counting up, and the numbers that they start with are the numbers that start this set of numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm not color coding this, I'm just adding some color to kind of keep it interesting. Pick one of the colors, and I want you to frame the title of these numbers and then outline the box. We're trying to make it apparent that these are like the boxes stacking inside the boxes that I have in my visual. So I know that the numbers from one to infinity would not fit inside my cute little box, but you get the idea. We start with one and count up. This is the next box. In it, we get all of those natural numbers. They're still there. And we add exactly one more number. I heard you guys name this when I asked you to name some numbers that you know at your table. These are the whole numbers. What's the difference between a whole number? What is the difference between whole numbers and natural numbers? It, the addition of zero. Whole numbers start at zero, and then it's all the natural numbers. I'm recording. Okay. Okay, our next number set up is a big one. And my visual doesn't quite capture how much bigger this is. Really, when we went from this to this one, we added just one number. When we're adding this, we're literally doubling the numbers. And I heard some of you say this when you were talking with each other as well. These are the integers. And integers, 
include positives and negatives and zero. So when we talk about this set, we say that this set includes natural numbers, their opposites, and zero. And we're going to write that definition in. Integers include natural numbers, their opposites, and zero. Zero is sort of a standalone number in this. If you look up at my number line on the windows, find where zero is. It's right in the middle, and to the right are all the positive numbers that are the natural numbers, and to the left are all of the opposites. And they both just go on and on and on into infinity. And zero is like that place in the middle. It's almost like a mirror that holds the natural numbers and their opposites. And zero doesn't have an opposite, so it's kind of standing there by itself as a major point on our number line. So here's some examples you might find in the integers. 17 and negative 17, because they're opposites of each other. You might also see things like 16 over 4. Negative 10 over 5. The square root of 16 with a negative in front of it. And I'm just realizing I started color coding my whole numbers and didn't give you guys examples. So we're going to backtrack a little bit here. The big thing about whole numbers is that they include 0. It also includes things that become whole numbers. So the square root of 25 is equal to 5. 5 is a whole number, and 5 is also a natural number. If I wanted to put the square root of 25 in integers, would that still work? It does because 5 is an integer. It's a natural number. 5 is a whole number, and 5 is also a natural number. So again, this visual shows what I had in this cup is still there. We've added 0 here, and we've added the opposites of the natural numbers here. Are you guys seeing how our numbers are growing and growing? And then we have the giant box. I wish this was even bigger, but it was the biggest one that came with the toy set. I took out the smallest one, it was really little. This holds numbers I heard you guys mentioning. What are some numbers that you have not seen yet that you know are on the number line, but they're in between places? Decimals? Percent. Fractions? Percent is a ratio out of 100. So we're taking everything we already had, our natural numbers, our zero, our opposites of the naturals, and we're adding everything in between them. And we call this set the rational numbers. And it is a big set. We'll get some examples there in a minute, but go ahead and use your color to show it's different from the others. Okay, rational numbers. Here's the notes part. It includes fractions and it includes decimals, but it does not include all decimals. It includes decimals that repeat and decimals that we, what we say terminate. Yep, is that better? Thanks for letting me know. 
So when I think of rational numbers, I think of anything I could make look like a ratio or a fraction fits in this set. So the number six fits because I can make that into a ratio by adding its invisible one, right? Mm -hmm. But then I could also have two thirds. I could have a repeating decimal Think about when you've divided one third in your calculator and you get all those threes that show up. Do you know what I'm talking about? We show that as a repeating decimal because those threes just go on and on and on and on and on forever. And we put that line over to show it's a repeating decimal. A terminating decimal would be something like 25 hundredths. One fourth divided and turned into a decimal stops. This number does not go on and on. It terminates at those two decimal places. We can have negatives. We can have fractions that could become a percent. 37 hundredths would be 37 percent, but we leave it as a rational number or we show it as a decimal in here. Does anybody want to guess what that leaves for the other side of our set here? It is. This one here, this one box I have at, that matches over here, this is for our irrational numbers. I'm guessing they called them irrational numbers because they don't fit in these boxes and make the sense that these numbers make. They do fit on the number line in strange ways. Could you get the door, please? Here. So let's get a color put around that to show instead of those cubes or squares that we were dealing with, this one's a rectangle. It doesn't fit in. But it's still part of the real number system. This whole thing is a set all together. Probably the most famous irrational number I have a poster of above my door. Pi. Pi is irrational. Oops, that's a bad pi sign. When I make it, I try to make it look like a little wave. Pi has numbers that go on and on for infinity and they never ever have a repeating pattern that shows up. So non-repeating decimals are in this set. We also have roots or what we call radicals. That are not the opposite of squares. And you're probably all thinking, I don't know what she's making us write. That does not make sense to me. Over here, we have the square root of 25. What's the opposite of the square root of 25? Go ahead. Uh, oh, you're thinking the opposite is an opposite on the number line. I'm thinking on undoing the square root. Five times five. So 5 squared gets us 20, the square root of 25. And to undo this, we would do the opposite and we would pull that 5 out. Does that make sense? There's other radicals like the square root of 2. It's a non-repeating decimal. You can calculate this with a calculator, but it does not come out to be like 1 or 3. It's a non-repeating decimal that does show up on our number line in between some numbers, but it's not the opposite of a square. Does that make sense now? So over here, I could have like the square root of 16, the square root of 100, the square root of 49, but over here, it would be the square root of 48. It's just under seven, because the square root of 49 is seven, right? Seven times seven? This one is just under seven, and it's a decimal that goes on and on and on. 
We also have, like I said up here, non-repeating decimals. Numbers like this. Oops, I didn't mean to put another point there. There's a pattern to that decimal I just created, but it's not a repeat. Every time we get a zero, we get an extra one, and it keeps going on and on and on for infinity. That's an irrational number. And that is what we call the real number system. I thought that was a rational number, that he's repeating. 